Hello, I'm Lucy Mayling and I'm an SD7 in trauma and orthopaedics. Septic arthritis. What does cartilage have in common with ice? Both have a very low coefficient of friction, which means they are very slippery. And in fact, articular cartilage is 10 times more slippery than even ice. And again, more slippery than any man-made joint replacement surface. So it's really good at its job of joint movement. It's crucial therefore that we keep hold of our native cartilage wherever possible. If articular cartilage is damaged, it never heals completely. And this is because it has no direct blood supply. Next, what do joints and eyeballs have in common besides being excellent career choices? And as you'll know, cataract surgery is the number one most successful operation according to the World Health Organization, and it trumps total hip replacement. Synovial joints and eyeballs are both sites of immune privilege which means that the body's normal immune cells do not act here. They're not allowed in. And this is to protect the delicate tissues within the joint and within the eye. So if infection gets in, the body can't easily clear it. And that's why it's bad news. So how does infection get into joints? Directly, by a trauma, or an iatrogenic injection, locally spreading from a nearby infection, or most commonly via the bloodstream. Synovial fluid is a dialysate of plasma and a bacteremia can filter bugs through the capillary network into the joint as it makes the synovial fluid. So why is this a problem? Bacteria secrete proteolytic enzymes, which destroy cartilage directly. Also, cartilage receives its nutrition via diffusion across the synovial fluid. Replace this with pus and the cartilage will be deprived of its nourishment. And again, it will die. So how does the patient present? They will have a hot, swollen, possibly erythematous and painful joint. They will be reluctant to move it at all and really won't be weight bearing if it's a lower limb joint. Septic arthritis can affect any of the body's synovial joints, but it's commonly seen in the knee. Always think of your differential causes for an effusion. Is the fluid in there pus, making this a septic arthritis, blood, making it a hemarthrosis, or sterile but excessive fluid, such as in a crystal arthropathy, gout or pseudogout? So how do I diagnose septic arthritis? I use the Cocker's criteria, which include pyrexia, the inability to weight bear, a raised white cell count, and a raised erythrocyte sedimentation rate. The presence of all four of these is virtually diagnostic of septic arthritis, yielding more than 99% accuracy. But the presence of just one feature almost excludes it. More recently, CARED has added C-reactive protein as another criterion, which you can use to replace ESR. So what happens if the patient has two, or maybe three of these criteria? Do they have septic arthritis? Well, we don't know unless we aspirate the joint. Even if the patient has all four criteria, the next step is to still aspirate the joint to identify the bug. How is it done? 
Again, I'm going to use the example of the knee as this is the common, one of the common sites. Try this now. Extend your knee and feel just lateral to the upper part of your patella. You'll feel a soft spot just lateral to your quadriceps tendon. And a needle can be inserted through this area and directed behind the patella. This will reliably get you into the knee joint without uh, damaging any surrounding structures. It is very important to keep this procedure sterile and to use a needle that is big enough to aspirate any gloop. So how should it look? Normal joint fluid is slightly yellow, like clear cider. Turbid but runny fluid may represent an inflammatory effusion, such as gout or pseudogout. Thick and gloopy banana milkshake is pus. Send the fluid to the lab for urgent microscopy as well as culture and sensitivities. Don't forget to send a sample for crystal analysis too. Bear in mind that crystal arthropathy can coexist with a septic arthritis as one may precipitate the other. What happens next? Well, after you have taken your sample, you can safely begin intravenous antibiotics. However, these alone are not enough to cure an infection. The main surgical treatment is washout, which can be done arthroscopically or open, but should be performed promptly. As I mentioned earlier, synovial joints are a specialist privileged area without immune cells. It's also difficult for antibiotics to get into these sites, and this is why they're not as effective as at clearing an infection as they may be elsewhere in the body. Now for an aside. I want to explain that septic arthritis is not the same as infection around a joint replacement, known as prosthetic joint infection. And this isn't just me being fastidious, it's important because the managements differ. Both involve infection within a joint and both can be a serious problem. If a patient has overwhelming sepsis, the immediate treatment is the same by way of surgical washout to decompress the bacterial load and to save the patient's life. But in a stable patient, the treatment is different. Remember that septic arthritis is a disease of cartilage, which is destroyed by infection. Artificial joints have no cartilage, so no issue there. However, bacteria can settle on foreign material and create biofilm, which is essentially a permaslime layer that protects the bacteria from any attempt at eradication, be it antibiotics or washout. For this reason, infected joint replacements often need more extensive surgery in the form of revision surgery to replace the replacement. And this needs to be done by a specialist surgeon after appropriate workup and planning. Most arthroplasty surgeons would prefer to aspirate an artificial joint in a sterile theater to avoid iatrogenic introduction of bacteria. I would advise you not to aspirate these in the emergency department. Moving on, here's a game for you. Pause me for a moment and assign a bug to each patient seen here. In a moment, I will give you the answers. You'll have noticed that there are five microorganisms listed for six patients. And this is to highlight that the commonest bug by far is Staph aureus, featuring in both the adult and the pediatric patient. Our sexually active teenager has gonorrhea. The neonate has group B strep, 
the IVDU has Pseudomonas or another atypical bacterium. And sickle cell disease predisposes to salmonella infection. This is because microthromboses within the gut permit translocation of gut organisms into the bloodstream. The consequences of septic arthritis include adjacent spread to the bone or osteomyelitis, which is in itself very difficult to treat. Early arthritis from the destruction of cartilage. And pus under pressure within the joint can occlude the blood supply to the surrounded bone, causing avascular necrosis. Ultimately, untreated septic arthritis can be associated with overwhelming sepsis, multiple organ failure and death. So to reiterate, septic arthritis is a clinical emergency whereby cartilage can be rapidly destroyed and never grows back. Cocker's and CARED's criteria help to rouse clinical suspicion, but diagnosis is confirmed with a joint aspirate taken before antibiotics are commenced. This is to avoid clouding the clinical picture. Treatment is with surgical washout. Thank you very much.